Hello and welcome to day 151 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aroleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for guiding us to this 151st day of our journey through your word. As we open our scriptures today, we seek your wisdom and guidance. Illuminate our minds and enrich our hearts as we read, so that we may understand your truths and apply them to our lives. Lord, may your Holy Spirit work within us opening our eyes to see what you would have us learn and our ears to hear your gentle whispers. Help us to discern your will and give us the courage to follow where you lead. We ask that this time of study not only increases our knowledge but also deepens our relationship with you. May the words we read today inspire us, challenge us, and transform us helping us to grow in faith and love bless this day's reading lord and make it fruitful may we encounter you in new and profound ways and may our spirits be refreshed and renewed by your holy presence in the name of jesus we pray amen day 151 may 31st 2024 365 days bible reading Old Testament, 1 Samuel 29, 1 Samuel 30, and 1 Samuel 31. New Testament, John 19, 28 to 42, John 21 to 10. Samson Proverbs, Psalm 68, verse 28 to 35. Old Testament, NIV version, 1 Samuel 29, 1 to 19, to 1 to 11, rather. Ashish sends David back to Ziklag. The Philistines gathered all their forces at Afik, and Israel camped by the spring in Jezreel. As the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the rear with Ashish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, <clears throat> What about these Hebrews? Ashish replied, Is this not David, who was an officer of Saul, king of Israel. He has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with Ashish and said, Send the man back, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle, or he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of our own men. Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. So Ashish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day you came to me until today, I have found no fault in you. But the rulers don't approve of you. Now, turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. But what have I done? asked David. What have you found against your servant from the day I came to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Ashish answered, I know that you have been as pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said he must not go up with us into battle. Now, get up early, along with your master's servants who have come with you, and leave in the morning as it is light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. 1 Samuel 31-31 David destroys the Amalekites. 
David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now, the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burned it, and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the six hundred men with him came to the Bazaar Valley, where some stayed beyond, behind. Two hundred of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other four hundred continued to pursue. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat part of a cake of fig of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, Why do you be, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Keratites, some territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, Can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, Swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. He led David down, and there they were, scattered over the countryside eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day, and none of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Bezor Valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, Because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. David replied, No, my brothers, you must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. David made this a statute and ordinance for Israel from that day to this. When David reached Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here is a gift for you from the plunder of the Lord's enemies. David sent it to those who were in Bethel, Ramoth, Negev, and Jatir, to those in Aroah, Sifmoth, Eshtemoa, and Rakal, to those in the towns of the Jeramelites and the Kenites, to those in Hormah, 
or Ashan, Athak, and Hebron, and to those in all the other places where he and his men had roamed. 1 Samuel 31, 1 to 13. Saul takes his life. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell dead on Mount Geboa. The Philistines were in hot pursuit of Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons, Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run me through. Or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites along the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Geboa. They cut off his head and stripped off his armor. And they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among their people. They put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreths and fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. When the people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men marched through the night to Beth Shan. They took down the bodies of Saul and his sons from the wall of Beth Shan and went to Jabesh where they burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh and they fasted seven days. New Testament NIV Version John 19, 28-42 The Death of Jesus Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk with the high soap plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, he said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, it was a day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath, because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses, during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones would be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. The burial of Jesus. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body... The two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had, e had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. John 20, 1-10 The Empty Tomb Early on the first day of the week, 
While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as a coat that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 68, 28 to 35 Summon your power, God. Show us your strength, our God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Humbled, may the beast bring bars of silver. Scatter the nations with the light in war. Envoys will come from Egypt. Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord. To him will rise across the highest heavens. The ancient heavens will thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Amen. Lessons learned from 1 Samuel 29. Navigating complex allegiances. David is caught in a precarious situation with the Philistines where trust and loyalty are questioned. This teaches the importance of discernment and tact in handling relationships where interests conflict. Divine intervention in unexpected ways. The Philistine commander's distrust of David leads to his dismissal from battle, which ultimately spares him from fighting against his own people, Israel. This shows how God can use even doubtful situations to protect and guide us. Lessons learned from 1 Samuel 30. Resilience in the face of disaster. David and his men returned to Ziklag to find it destroyed and their families taken. David's leadership shines as he encourages himself in the Lord and pursues the Amalekites to successfully recover all that was lost. The importance of seeking God's guidance. Before pursuing the raiders, David inquires of the Lord, receiving affirmation to proceed. This underlines the value of consulting God in decision-making, especially in critical moments. Lessons learned from 1 Samuel 31. The tragic end of Saul. Saul's death in battle, alongside his sons, including the manner of his suicide to avoid capture, highlights the tragic consequences of his prolonged disobedience and estrangement from God. The inevitability of God's judgment. Saul's reign ends in accordance with the prophecy given by Saul, demonstrating that God's judgments are certain and that leadership requires humility and obedience. Lessons learned from John 19, 28-42 Fulfillment of prophecy through Jesus' death Specific details of Jesus' crucifixion, like not breaking his legs and piercing his side, fulfill Old Testament prophecies affirming Jesus as the Messiah. The care for Jesus' body after death the actions of Jesus of, of the actions of Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus in bearing Jesus demonstrate devotion and respect even in death, encouraging respect for the deceased and courage in expressing faith. 
Lessons learned from John 20, 1 to 10. The discovery of the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene's early visit to the tomb, and the subsequent arrival of Peter and John illustrate the initial confusion and gradual understanding of Jesus' resurrection emphasizing the transformative power of witnessing evidence of the resurrection the significance of the resurrection the empty tomb and the folded linen are pivotal in confirming jesus's victory over death underscoring the foundation of christian belief in the resurrection as the cornerstone of faith and hope in eternal life lessons learned from psalm 68 verse 28 to 35 God's power over nature and nations. The psalm praises God's majesty and his dominion over the earth, reminding us of the vast scope of his power and authority. Encouragement to worship because of God's strength and benevolence. The call for kingdoms to sing praises to God will rise across the ancient skies above, above and whose strength is displayed in the skies motivates believers to worship God for his protective and providing nature. These passages collectively teach about the complexities of leadership, the significance of divine guidance, the fulfillment of prophecy, the impact of Jesus' resurrection, and the power of God celebrated through worship. Faith declarations from 1 Samuel 29, 1 Samuel 30, and 1 Samuel 31. I declare that God is my protector and guide, even in complex and uncertain situations. I trust that he will navigate me through conflicting allegiances and use even challenging circumstances for my good. I confess that in times of crisis, I will seek the Lord before I act like David. I will find my strength in God, knowing that with his guidance, I can recover what was lost and overcome adversity. I acknowledge the tragic consequences of disobedience and the importance of humility before God. I commit to living a life of obedience and seeking God's will, so that my end will be one of honor, not tragedy. Faith declarations from John nineteen twenty eight to 42 and John 21 to 10. I affirm that every detail of Jesus' death was in fulfillment of scripture, proving that he is the Messiah. I will honor and respect the sacrifice he made for me on the cross, showing devotion and care in my relationship with him, as Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus did. I rejoice in the truth of the resurrection, recognizing it as the cornerstone of my faith. The empty tomb signifies Christ's victory over death, offering me eternal life and hope. I am committed to living in the light of this resurrection power. Faith declarations from Psalm 68, verse 28 to 35. I praise God for his supreme power over all creation and his majesty that surpasses all understanding. I will sing praises to his name, celebrating his strength and benevolence that sustain and protect me. I invite all nations and kingdoms to join in this worship, acknowledging his sovereignty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. That is Salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel 
Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a pleasure and a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.